Hello, I'm Ondine Frauenglass, Interim Director of the Santa Fe Community College Innovation Center. The Innovation Center is an incubator for innovative sustainable technology companies in New Mexico. My role at the Innovation Center is to provide project management for public-private business partnerships, facilities coordination on campus, and internship opportunities to community college students. I assumed leadership of the center in 2020 with 10 years of experience in bioenergy and algae cultivation projects at the state and national levels and curriculum development for two-year tech college programs, including this program for ATEC, the Algae Foundation's Algae Technology Educational Consortium. This lecture, an overview of the algae industry, is made possible by the generous support of Dr. Rebecca White. Executive Director of the Algae Biomass Organization. This final lecture will be an overview of the current state of the algae industry. Much of the information presented in this lecture was provided by the Algae Biomass Organization. The URL for the ABO is at the bottom of this slide under the airplane. The Algae Biomass Organization advocates for advancing algae policy and funding, serves as a hub for innovation and networking, and drives demand for made with algae products and services. Founded in 2008, the ABO is the leading voice of the algae products industry. Its members include producers, end users, suppliers, and the research community. The ABO is host of the Algae Biomass Summit, the largest annual global gathering of algae producers, researchers, investors, suppliers, policymakers, and other stakeholders. Collectively, the ABO strives to deliver on a shared mission to promote and accelerate the power of algae to create a step change in the health and well being of humanity and the environment. If you ever become interested in attending the summit, the link is at the bottom of this slide. A watershed event in supporting the algae industry was the 2018 Farm Bill, which dramatically expanded support for algae as an agricultural product. It established a new USDA Algae Agriculture Research Program. It addresses challenges in farm-scale commercial algae production. It supports the development of algae-based agriculture solutions. The bill provides algae, for the first time, full eligibility under the Biomass Crop Assistance Program. It provides financial support to farmers for establishment, production, and delivery of new biomass crops. And for the purpose of federal crop insurance programs, algae are explicitly defined as an agricultural commodity, paving the way for federal crop insurance for algae production. The bill adds several provisions that expand carbon capture and utilization research, as well as education and outreach at the Department of Agriculture. This creates a significant opportunity to monetize carbon in the farm economy. Previous USDA methodology excluded bio-based products from recycled carbon calculations. The Farm Bill directs the USDA to establish a methodology providing full credit for bio-based content in products from biologically recycled carbon. The bill expands the Section 9003 Loan Guarantee Program and allows algae-based and other biorefinery projects for the manufacture of renewable chemicals and bio-based products to qualify regardless of whether biofuels will be produced. There are still several gaps to address in the large-scale production of algae, including the ability to grow and harvest highly productive algae at large scale, the fractionation and conversion of algae into products and value-added co-products to meet market needs, assessing existing markets and building new markets for algae-based products, addressing the resources needed for the distribution and utilization of a national algae industry, 
and evaluating the sustainability of algae production. Research and development goals for algae include continuing dedicated R&D for algae products, developing techno-economic models to inform research, leveraging high-value algal products to develop algae industry infrastructure, and coordinating regulatory and policy guidance to support algae companies. This lecture will look at policies, procedures, and initiatives for growing the algae industry, provide an overview of the companies and other interesting parties involved, take a look at where biomass production stands today, and other commercial products that can make you money, and some examples of a few of the companies. The number of algae companies that belong to the ABO is quite large and range from small startups with one or two individuals to large multinational corporations. Several of the Department of Energy National Laboratories are involved in research and testing of algal technologies and products. Culture collections that have large collections of different strains of algae are a necessary part of the industry as well as academically oriented test beds for validating the new technologies. Algae biomass production is not a cottage industry. Algae are produced on an industrial scale all around the world. This biomass is used for many different products, including food. Evidence of human consumption of algae as food comes from archaeological sites in Chile, indicating that humans have been consuming algae for 14,000 years. Written accounts of algae cultivation, harvesting, and consumption for food are found in China and Ireland from early in the first millennium. The food market for algae is very big. Seaweed, or macroalgae, as food, is a $5.9 billion a year industry around the world and is expected to be $11.9 billion annually by 2027. Microalgae for food is currently a $3.4 billion a year industry and is expected to grow to almost $5 billion a year by 2027. The entire algae industry, including chemicals and other value-added products, such as nutraceuticals, is expected to be about $85 billion a year by 2027. Algal sources of omega-3 fatty acids are rapidly replacing fish oil sources, reducing pressure on already overfished ocean populations. The growth in the algae industry has drawn attention from investors, entrepreneurs, and the media. It has been projected that almost one-fifth of the protein consumed by humans on the planet will come from algae. The use of algae as a biofertilizer or a soil amendment is gaining rapid acceptance in the agricultural community, especially by those practicing regenerative agriculture. The use of algae as a source of oil or sugars for biofuel production as biodiesel, green diesel, bio crude, or alcohol-based fuels has had its ups and downs based on the price of petroleum. But algae-based fuels can operate planes, trains, and automobiles, and ships, and those of the U.S. Navy are the largest consumers of biodiesel in the world. Algae as a feedstock for bioplastic is a rapidly growing industry due to new research and entrepreneurial zeal, as well as the unsustainability of using corn or potato starch as the raw material for bioplastic, due to competition with food for land, nutrients, and water resources. Currently, only 1% of all plastic is bioplastic, and only a small portion of that is from algae. But the industry is growing rapidly. Everything from flip-flops and shoes to surfboards and skis are made with plastics and foams derived from algae. Environmentally safe inks are also being produced from algae. 
Another growing market for algae products is cosmetics and skin care. Many of the oils and antioxidants produced in algae are beneficial to the skin. There is a consumer trend towards natural cosmetic products in preference to synthetic cosmetics. Phycocyanin is a highly desirable blue pigment because it is non-allergenic and can be organically and sustainably produced. Algae have a huge potential to clean up wastewater, especially at the tertiary treatment or polishing stage, at a much lower cost than current methods and provide some financial return by production of valuable biomass. Using algae for wastewater treatment is essentially controlled eutrophication. Microalgae can be used to take carbon dioxide out of the air and remove nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers from the water especially from agricultural runoff. The biomass can be land applied, recycling those nutrients. Other value-added products such as biofuels or soil amendments can be obtained from algae used to treat wastewaters. Algae may be the savior of the small American farmer. Microalgae production can be done at a small or a very large scale on unused or degraded farmlands so as not to compete with food production. Algae can provide value-added products for agriculture and stimulate rural manufacturing. Today, seaweed cultivation provides seasonal jobs to create year-long employment along the coasts. Seaweed cultivation can be alternated with lobster or shellfish harvesting since the algae and seafood harvest seasons don't overlap. The U.S. Department of Energy's Bioenergy Technologies Office has funded through the Algae Foundation the Algae Technology Educational Consortium, or ATEC. The program is administered by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory to train the algae industry workforce. Santa Fe Community College is the center of training algae cultivation technicians or algae farmers, graduating the first cohort in 2018. And Austin Community College is a center of biotechnology in algae cultivation. ATEC also has programs to introduce the public to algae, such as MOOCs, or Massive Open Online Courses in Algae Cultivation, Biotechnology, and Seaweed Cultivation. The Algae Academy is a K-12 science program that meets the next generation science standards and distributes algae science kits to teachers around the nation free of charge. Algae culture extension short courses in macro and microalgae are free online. We will cover a few case studies to give an idea of the maturity of parts of the algae industry. Qualitas Health produces a blend of EPA and DHA omega-3 supplements from Nanochloropsis. Qualitas has 53 employees with a corporate headquarters in Houston, Texas. It operates 55 1.1 acre ponds in Imperial, Texas and Columbus, New Mexico for a total of 71.5 million liters of cultivation volume. Green Wave is a regenerative ocean farm based in Branford, Connecticut with 23 employees. It is primarily used for research and training using a farming model based on 20 acre offshore lease parcels. The purpose of the farm is for training farmers and hatchery technicians with workshops and for aquaculture farm design. Green Wave emphasizes value added products from seaweed such as bioplastics, food, fertilizer, and animal feed. Microbioengineering is a consulting and engineering firm with 18 employees located in San Luis Obispo, California. Microbio specializes in the design and construction of algae ponds for wastewater reclamation, biofuel production, microalgae feeds, and specialty products. They use a polyculture to treat wastewater, producing biofertilizers and biofuels. 
These polycultures include Desmodesmus, Cenodesmus, and Tribonema. Microbio works at a multi-acre scale to produce 35 to 70 dry tons of algae per year. An agricultural runoff treatment plant near Delhi, California treats the wastewater with algae, providing clean water for nearby orchards and producing biomass. Algix does not grow algae. They source the algae biomass from strategic partners that use algae for environmental services. Algix converts the algal biomass into foams for thermoplastic compounding at its plant in Meridian, Mississippi. In 2019, 500,000 pounds of algae were processed and turned into many consumer products. Most of the biomass that Algix used was cyanobacteria. The facility can process 5 million pounds dry weight of algae annually with 15 employees. This concludes the introduction to the biology of algae. Thank you for hanging in there for the entire course. We hope you have gained knowledge of a variety of interesting and useful algae species and products. We leave it to you to continue the expansion of the algae industry around the world and especially in your backyard.